Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm super excited because I've got my hands on the all-new Minus Forum HN 2673 Mini Gaming PC. This is one that I've definitely been looking forward to, and really what makes this special is we've got a very small form factor PC with the dedicated GPU. So we really do have a full-fledged, super small form factor gaming PC, and the GPU they opted to use here is actually an MXM form factor. It's the Intel Arc A730M. And this is one that I've been wanting to test in laptops and mini PCs for a while, but you know, they're a little few and far in between. But either way you look at it, the graphics performance that this thing's going to be putting out is miles ahead of any GPU on the market right now. And the newly designed cooling system that Minus Forum has come up with for this mini PC allows you to game flat out, but it's still going to stay nice and quiet. Inside of the box with the new HN2673, you're going to get a 6-foot HDMI cable. We also have a stand for the PC itself. This will let it stand vertically, but you can always set it horizontally if you want to. And we've got a 240 watt power supply here. When it comes to I.O., up front here, we've got a full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, two 3.5 millimeter jacks, one for audio in, one for audio out, and USB Type-C. Now the front USB-C here is 3.2 Gen 2, but it only supports data. Now don't worry, because around back, we've got two full-function USB Type-C ports. These will do video out two full-size HDMI ports, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports, and two USB 2.0 ports. Plus, we've got our power in right there at the very bottom. If you were taking notes, we can do quad displays out of this, given we have both of those HDMI ports and two full-function USB-C around back here. I also wanted to give you a look at the internals here because it's really interesting the way they've got this set up. I've been really excited about getting my hands on this because I think it's going to put out some amazing performance. As you can see, we've got a quad fan set up, and underneath those fans, we've got dual heat sinks. We've got a heat sink for the CPU side of things, and a heat sink for the GPU side of things. Obviously, we don't have a lot of room to work in here, and that's what makes this really interesting, because Minus Forum actually opted to use an MXM form factor GPU. We do have a dedicated GPU, we're not relying on integrated graphics here. I thought about pulling this GPU out, but I didn't want to ruin anything just yet before I got into my testing, so I did a little bit of research online, and it looks like ASUS has their own MXM A730M GPU. Now, I'm not exactly sure if Minus Forum is using the ASUS version here because I haven't pulled it out yet, but, you know, I was really interested to see who was making these Intel Arc MXM GPUs, and MXM is short for Mobile PCIe Express Module. Basically, manufacturers came up with these for high-end workstation laptops and gaming laptops, so you could actually replace the GPU if it ever goes bad, and sometimes you can do an upgrade. I also wanted to give you a look at the other side of this mini PC, so I pulled the side panel off, and this will support two 2.5-inch drives. I would recommend SSDs here, but you could go mechanical if you wanted to. And of course, when it comes to the full specs of the HN2673, for the CPU, we've got the Intel i7-12650H. We've got 10 cores, 16 threads, up to 4.7 gigahertz. This system will support up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4, running at 3200 megatransfers per second. But the main claim to fame for this new mini PC is the dedicated GPU. It's an Intel Arc A730M, 6 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM, running at a 192-bit bus, We've got a boost clock up to 2050 megahertz. I think base is around 1000 megahertz, but it's got 24 XE cores and 24 ray tracing units built in. When it comes to storage, you can use one M.2 NVMe SSD, and it is PCIe 4.0. We've also got enough room in here for two 2.5 inch drives. It's got Wi Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.3, and it's running Windows 11. All right, so I've had the system up and running for a little while now. I haven't run into any issues. And i got to say, this thing is actually pretty quiet. And it comes down to having those four fans as opposed to just one big fan in here. These don't need to spin up as high to move more air over the internal cooling system. And uh, as you can see, i7-12650H, 10 cores, 16 threads. We can still access the internal UHD graphics on this chip. But we're not going to worry about those because we've got that Intel Arc A730M dedicated GPU with 6 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM. When it comes to this i7 CPU, out of the box we've got a base TDP of 45 watts and a boost up to 95, which uh, is pretty crazy when it comes to a smaller PC, but these chips do pull a lot of power. You can up this from the BIOS or turn it down if you want to. And since we've got that dedicated ARC GPU, we can access the Intel ARC control panel. We can update directly from here. We've got a game launcher. We can also set up different profiles here. 
different uh, video profiles. Unfortunately, with these mobile Arc GPUs, there's not much overclocking we can do from the uh, control panel here. There are third-party apps that we can use. But so far, I've been seeing some pretty decent performance out of this the way it's set up. As for using this as an everyday PC, you're not going to have any issues with web browsing, email checking, 4K, YouTube, video playback, or whatever app you want to use. This would actually make a pretty good little video editing machine, photo editing machine, but you know, the main thing we're here for is gaming. I've been trying to get my hands on one of these A730Ms for a while, and uh, finally have one in-house to test out. But before we see how this thing really handles PC gaming, I wanted to take a look at some benchmarks that I ran on this unit. 3D Mark Night Raid coming in with a 48,300, Fire Strike 19,526, and finally we've got Time Spy with an 8,960. And just for reference, I do have a laptop with an RTX 3060, so it is the mobile variant. I went ahead and ran Time Spy, and we've got a different CPU here in the systems, but they're really close. As you can see, the ARC A730M did beat out the RTX 3060 by just a little bit. I mean, these would definitely trade blows with each other all day long. But now it's time to check out some real-world gaming on this system. And we're starting off light here with CSGO. I knew we'd get great performance here. This is one that we could run at 1440p. But I just left it at 1080, very high settings. And by the end of this run here, we actually had an average of 256 FPS. I knew we were going to see great performance out of a game like this. And really, when it comes down to it, this A730M is going to handle any of your favorite esports games at 1080p high or very high settings. I also wanted to test out at least one fighting game, so I went with Street Fighter 6, and right now we're maxed out at 1440p. There's a chance we could run this at 4K, you know, high settings. We may need to drop a few of them down. But uh, 1440p, even 1080 with this game is great, as long as we can hit that nice and smooth 60fps mark. Injustice 2 and Mortal Kombat 11 also run at 1440p, high settings on this system without an issue. Spider-Man Miles Morales, 1080p, very high settings, no resolution scale, and remember, I mean, you could use XESS if you wanted to, but we don't need it with this at 1080. If we took this up to 1440, we'd probably have to turn that to balanced, but we could definitely do over 60 with it. But with the settings I have here, we got an average of 87 FPS out of this one. And remember, Spider-Man Remastered is basically the same thing. We're going to see the same kind of performance there. Next on the list, we've got Control. And with this one, I'm at 1080. I had to drop it down to high settings. Now, there's a lot of mixes we could do here with the settings in this game. But I'd say it actually runs really well here. We got an average of 71 FPS. I was actually expecting a little more out of it. I figured we could take this up to Ultra, but unfortunately we can't. Here's Shadow of the Tomb Raider's built-in benchmark, 1080p, highest settings, looking pretty decent here, but by the end, we only had an average of 66 FPS. Dropping this down to high would definitely help out. I also wanted to test out Red Dead 2, so I just used the built-in benchmark. We're kind of right there in the middle with the slider, so basically high settings here, 1080p. We got an average of 88, a high of 121, and a low of 31. And the final game I wanted to test, at least for this video, was Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p, high settings. We're getting an average of 72 FPS. Now, if we went in and turned on a little bit of resolution scale, we could definitely get more out of it. But with a system like this, locking it down at 60, 1080p, game still looks great, and you can play this all day long. Whenever I'm working with these small form factor or mini PCs, I always like to take a look at total system power consumption because this can be really important to some people, especially people living in areas where energy costs are kind of outrageous right now. And remember, this is total system power consumption. I have it plugged into a kilowatt meter while doing all of my tests. And at idle, we're around 26 watts. Average gaming jumps up to 134 watts. And the maximum that I could get this to pull while maxing out that ARC A730M and that 12th gen i7 was 192 watts. And remember, that's an extreme use case scenario. While gaming or just doing everyday tasks on this PC, you'll never see that 192 watt maximum. So overall, I think the new Minus Forum HN 2673 is actually a great performing mini PC. Love the fact that we do have that dedicated GPU, and seeing that it's Intel Arc, it might not be impressive to a lot of people, but we haven't seen a mini PC with an Intel Arc dedicated GPU yet, so I think this is pretty awesome. 
Intel has really been on top of their driver updates when it comes to these GPUs, and you know, since the release, we've seen a dramatic increase in performance across the board with those new driver updates, so there still may be a bit more we can squeeze out of this A730M in the future. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you're interested in learning more about the HN2673 or maybe picking one up, I'll leave some links in the description, and if there's anything else you want to see running on this mini PC, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.